In this video, we're going to take a look at a specific type of empirical molecular formula problem, which involves a process called combustion analysis. And so combustion analysis is done through an apparatus as shown here. And so what we do is we take our compound to be analyzed. So this is typically a compound that contains either carbon or hydrogen in some ratio, or it might be a compound that contains carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And I'm just using the letters A, B, and C here just to denote that we wouldn't know what those numbers actually are. And so we put that in our tube here. We heat it up and oxygen is also brought into this apparatus. And the way it's set up is we got a series of tubes. So the first tube has a material at the bottom that absorbs all the water that's produced. And the second tube has a material that absorbs all the carbon dioxide that's produced. And so you can measure the mass of the tubes before and after the reaction to figure out the mass of the water and the carbon dioxide produced. And then you would also know the mass of your compound to be analyzed. And we can use those numbers then to figure out what the empirical and molecular formula is of our compound that we burned. So let's take a look at a specific example. We've got a 2.52 four gram sample of a compound that contains carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. The sample is subjected to this carbon, hydrogen, or also known as combustion analysis. 3.703 grams of carbon dioxide and 1.514 grams of water are collected. We want to first determine the empirical formula of the compound. And then we want to see if one molecule of the compound contains 12 atoms of hydrogen, what's the molecular formula of the compound? Our first step here then is to, when we start determining the empirical formula of the compound, we're first going to take a look at how much carbon is produced. And when we do this reaction here, we have a compound CAHBOC. We're reacting it with oxygen, and we're producing carbon dioxide and water. And so all of the carbon in this carbon-containing compound is converted into CO2, and all of the hydrogen in this carbon-containing compound is converted into water. So we can use this information to, to determine how much carbon we had in our original compound and how much hydrogen we had in our original compound. So to do that, let's start with the carbon dioxide numbers. So in our carbon dioxide, whenever we want to do empirical formulas, we always need to convert back to moles. So to find the moles of carbon dioxide we had, we're going to take mass and divide it by molar mass. So we have 3.703 grams of CO2, and the molar mass of CO2 is 44.01 grams per mole. And so that would, if you do that calculation, give you 0.08413. I'm going to keep four decimal places and just draw some dots there. And that's the moles of CO2 that is produced. Now, in a mole of CO2, we have, based on our formula, that's also a, uh, would give us one mole of carbon. So if we have 0 0.08413 moles of CO2, that means we've got 0 0.084 one three moles of carbon. Next up, let's take a look at the water. So we got 1.514 grams of water that's collected. So if we take our one, our water, and we have 1.514 grams collected, then the number of moles is equal to 1.514 grams 
And we're gonna divide that by the molar mass of water, which is 18.02 grams per mole. And that is going to give us 0 0.08401. We'll just keep a few decimal places and that's moles of water. Now every mole of water has two moles of hydrogen atoms. Okay, because the formula is H2O. So every mole of water has two moles of hydrogen. So that means we need to multiply this number by two to give us the number of moles of hydrogen, which is 1.680 moles of hydrogen. Now, finding out the moles of oxygen in our compound is a little bit trickier because if we go back and take a look at our reaction, our oxygen is converted from our compound into CO2 and into water. So we can't do a direct uh, calculation, but we can indirectly figure it out by taking the mass and figuring out the max mass of oxygen in our original compound. And to do that, we're gonna take our original amount, uh, mass, sorry, which is 2.524 grams, and we're going to subtract the mass of carbon, and we're gonna subtract the mass of hydrogen. So to do that, we need our mass, and then to find our mass of carbon, we're gonna take the moles that we just calculated, 0.08413, moles and multiply it by the molar mass of carbon which is 12.01 grams per mole and then we'll do the same with hydrogen so hydrogen we determined we had 0 0.1680 grams and we'll multiply that molar mass of hydrogen is 1.01 grams per mole okay and then if we follow through this calculation I'm not going to show all the steps, make sure you try it, but once we do that calculation, the mass I get is 1.344 grams of oxygen. And so now we can convert that number to number of moles by taking the mass over the molar mass. So 1.344 divided by the molar mass of oxygen, which is 16.00 and that gives us about 0 0.084 moles of oxygen. From here now we have moles of carbon, which was, if we recall, 0 0.08413 moles. We have moles of hydrogen, which was about 0 0.1680 moles. And then we have moles of oxygen, which is about 0 0.084. Now we need to figure out the ratios in order to come up with the empirical formula. So the number of moles of oxygen is our lowest one, which means we need to divide each of these by 0 0.084. Okay, so we'll do that calculation for each. And that gives us a ratio of approximately one to two to one. So our empirical formula would be CH2O. And that's the answer for part A. For part B, the question says if we had 12 atoms of hydrogen, then what is our molecular formula? So what we need to do here is put in 12 for our hydrogen and take a look at what's happening between our empirical and our molecular formula. Well, you can see the subscripts here are going from two to 12, or we're multiplying it by six, which means we need to multiply this all the subscripts by six, gives us then a molecular formula of C6H12O6, or otherwise known as glucose. That's it then for this video. Let's move on to our next task.